Hi again, it's Ryan Miller with Aetna Interactive. We're gonna to talk today about online reputation and specifically the one thing you need to be doing right now to protect yourself online. Now, quick note before we begin. This video is intended for US practices only. For our clients and our friends up in Canada, it's important to note that right now the prevailing uh, legal environment uh, strongly against the idea of using testimonials and advertising. Some have interpreted that to mean um, needing to stay completely hands-off in the arena of online ratings and reviews. So this advice is not for you. Now, if you are concerned about your online reputation, you have good reason to be. Specifically, as I look back over the last 10 years, I've been lecturing all over the place at major medical meetings about the importance of paying attention to reputation. And for most of that time, most of the doctors I spoke with just buried their head in the sand. Right? It's, uh, I think the knee-jerk reaction is to ignore the problem and the challenge that comes with getting patients to share their experience online. Others would get angry and insist that only unhappy patients write reviews. And we know today that you can't bury your head in the sand and that the majority of reviews are in fact positive. And if you look around, well, all of those competitors, they've popped their heads right up, they're staring you in the eye, and they're using smart tactics like the one I'm about to share with you to get a really fantastic representation of their reputation across the web. Why does it matter? Well, what we see today is the data shows that 90% of patients or more are looking at online reviews as one of the first or last steps in influencing their selection of a specific provider. So we know that this matters to pretty much everyone. But when we take a deeper dive in the data, the thing that we learn is it's not just that you have some reviews, it's specifically that you have recent reviews. 69%, two out of three patients say that they're really only looking at the last three months when evaluating a particular provider. So the thing that you need to be doing right now is you need to use text messaging to solicit reviews from your patients. Very, very straightforward. They get a, an SMS or an MMS message with a link where they can share their experience online. Now, let's talk about some of the considerations and specifically why we recommend text messaging. So we offer a text messaging service for our clients. Many agencies will. And what we found in studying is that three times more reviews were generated when we use text messaging to solicit rather than, well, an email or a simple verbal ask. So text messaging is definitely the far superior way to encourage patients to share those experiences. But there are some technology considerations, so let me walk you through those really quickly. How do you send out the SMS? Well, if you have a CRM system or practice management software in play in your practice, the first thing to do is to ask, can I get the text messages generated out of these systems? Why this is beneficial is that software, well, they know naturally when you've already seen and treated a patient, and we can link to those events to trigger the SMS message to go out. In the event that those capabilities aren't available in your system, agencies like Aetna will be able to offer you subscription software that can get the job done. That software will allow you to uh, manually enter a single uh, person that you want to send that message out to. To bulk import a large group of emails, we recommend on a weekly or bi-weekly cadence, or excuse me, not just emails, but uh, cell phone numbers and patient IDs as well. And in addition to that, uh, often we can do a direct integration with your practice management software to get all those benefits of real time and automated uh, solicitation. Now, we are often asked when we're crafting those messages, should I offer some kind of incentive or promotion for people to write the review? The answer is no. First of all, text messaging is enough. It gets the job done. And specifically in the United States here, the Federal Trade Commission has come out and basically said, you cannot offer uh, compensation or incentive for patients for reviews and not disclose it. Uh, a whole bunch of practices were fined exactly for that in January of 2022. So don't do that. It's a horrible idea. It's against law and in most areas to be considered unethical. Now, what about the timing of reviews? This is a technical consideration that we have to factor in as well. This great graphic here from our friends over at La Jolla Cosmetic tells the story that we all know too well that very often immediately following patients, uh, procedures rather, patients aren't feeling great. They start nitpicking the results by week two. They're feeling a little better in the third week. And finally at week four, they're feeling super happy and ebullient about that result. Now, that's the moment in time where we wanna solicit. So we wanna make sure that the system you're using has the ability to do a delayed send so that you're asking for the review when we, well, we're pretty confident the patient's gonna be feeling great about their result. The last thing we get all the time is, well, the question, where do I want those reviews? And specifically we recommend Google and Facebook. They're the two that are gonna get you the greatest visibility and um, have the greatest impact in how those reviews can benefit 
your clinic. All right, that said, let's just wrap it up really quickly. Let me remind you, the thing you need to be doing right now, you need to be using text messaging to ask patients to share through reviews and the ratings on their experience in your clinic. If you have questions about online reputation, we're here for you anytime. Uh, find us on our website, follow us on Facebook, or just send us an email. And thanks for tuning in.